Okay, I've come out here, um, gosh, I'm about 800 yards above the uh, resort and about 400 yards below the first dock on the bluff. I was out here yesterday, I did one cast, and I was out here fishing, and I was fishing with this guy. Not during one cast, but I tied this one up before I came out. It's a mink or a brown scud, uh, number 14, tied on a 37-69 hook, which is a straight hook. And fishing the scud out here, um, I caught a fair amount of fish, and they were a little bit nicer rainbows. And um, it got me thinking, These fish out here, they're seeing scuds on the bottom for sure. Um, and they're not, they're feeding on freshwater shrimp, but they're not seeing any scud flies. They're not seeing really any um, pressure. They're seeing some bait. which I think some of them are, a lot of them are passing on because they're eating, they're eating shrimp. That's their natural food here, shrimp and midges. And a few years ago, I brought Morgan out here, a gal that used to work for us, Morgan Wyatt. We were drifting through this area with the water running and we were drifting scuds and she caught a very large brown. Um, which surprised me. But I always thought we really should be fishing scuds a lot in this area here. And since we have very ideal conditions right now, uh, it's cloudy today and uh, very little wind. And since I did so well yesterday up here, I thought I'd come up here and just video and uh, just see what what happens. I'm fishing. I, I just went through here and with a depth finder and just kind of scoped out the depth through here. And there's about a 150, 200 yard area um, that the water, not in the center of the lake, but back this way, about a boat length, uh, towards the center. That's about six, anywhere from five and a half to six and a half foot deep. And that's, uh, that's pretty easy to get a scud down on the bottom in that depth of water. I'm fishing about nine foot deep. I've got a weighted scud on. I put a lot of weight on this one uh, so it'd get down pretty quick. And I might be using a little bit too much. Uh, there might be too much distance between my float if I'm only fishing about, well, that's not, that's about right. Six, uh, fishing six foot deep, you need to be one and a half times the the depth that you're fishing, that's, that's my rule of thumb, so nine feet's not too much. And what that does, it puts that scud on the bottom, and then when I move it, I'm moving the float maybe th three or four inches every time I twitch it, and that theoretically the scud is moving along the bottom, and I just missed one. <clears throat> it's moving along the bottom those three or four inches and it's sitting back down. And since there's not a whole lot of uh, wind, I can really see that float. I can see if it just, if I see a little bit, I just missed another one. If I just see a little bit of a ring or a little vibration 
when that float vibrates, I can see rings starting out uh, from the float out. I'm setting the hook. Because that fish is not picking it up and moving it. He's picking that fly up and just, just kind of chewing on it a little bit, saying, hmm, is this thing real or not? So that's all I'm going to see as far as movement in my float. Uh, the mistake is when you see that, that movement, you're thinking, okay, I'll wait for him to take it. When he's already taken it, it's in his mouth. He can set the hook. If you wait, two things will happen. He'll either spit it out or he'll swallow it. And you don't want him to do either one of those. This is not a hasn't been. It wasn't yesterday and it isn't today so far. You got to be pretty patient. I'd leave it. I would leave it in one spot a little longer than I would, say, a jig or a midge. Because those fish are swimming around. They're not staying in one place. And if they come into the area where your scud is, and they see it moving along the bottom a little bit, they're going to swim over. Talk on it. <laughs> they're going to swim over and look at it. That's three bites. I have. On two of the bites, I, I've, eh, I'm not sure about that one. On two of the bites, I felt the, the fish for a second, so I just pulled it out of his mouth. Okay, he hit that one on the way down, because I saw my line take off. A lot of fly guys that are seeing me catching trout down this far lower lake uh, on a scud it might be a little surprised. And I am kind of. I haven't done this much, but it makes sense. If you've got scuds in this area, and you can uh, you can fish it in a way that uh, that you're successful, that you can get that scud down on the bottom, and I think the thought is the water is so deep that you really can't do this. Obviously, it's not. This area of the lake has, uh, now that's a good fish. That is a sucker. <laughs> oh. He's big. He's fun to catch. I guess suckers eat scuds too. Um, they're good to eat. Here in Taney Como, guys, they eat them all the time. That is not a sucker. That is not, that is not a sucker. This is a first for me if I land him. I'm pretty sure I know what that is. Yeah, that's a sucker. I thought it was a catfish for a minute. Ah, I thought it was a cat. That's a big old. I think they're white. I think they're white suckers in here. I think I'll let him.
cut. Not very often, but you'll catch. You'll catch these suckers on jigs or flies. This one's fat. They're kind of hard to lip. Okay. There we go. That's a big old sucker. He's slimy. All right. One trout, one sucker. Guess I haven't caught a trout yet, huh? Well, didn't think I'd catch that. I imagine you could, uh, with like a half unit running, you could do this. Use a little bigger float, a little more weight. to get your, keep your fly down, and you could uh, drift through here using a flyer or even a spin rod. You can drift, uh, you can drift scuds on a drift rig. Um, just tie that fly on where the hook is. That was a little bit of, a little bite. I know they do that up in the trophy area. You can do it down here. Might have to try that. Usually you get your bite right after you right after you move it. These guys are not being very aggressive. The other thing I mentioned in another video is you don't want to throw your your float or your fly too far from the boat because you've got to be able to see that little vibration. If you throw it out there too far, you could be getting that bite and not see it. So I'm throwing out about Oh, two rod lengths, about 20 feet. 25 feet from the boat. Oh, I just broke him off. Oh. I just broke one off. Turn to the fly on. Okay, I'm going to tie a gray one on this time. And this one doesn't have as much weight in it, so it's going to drop really slow.
I really should put a couple little tiny split shots on it, maybe one. We'll see. I thought he was playing with it. Ah. <clears throat> I 
I'm not sure if I'm not getting down or what, but I've quit getting bites. So I'm going to put on a couple of shot. For those that use these, this is a couple of N8s. A whole bunch of uh, different sizes of shots. I'd show you these things, but you probably can't see them. They're so small. I'm only going to put it about a foot foot and a half above the fly. You couldn't see them. I've gotten away from my bank a little bit. I'm going to move back in. We'll see if this makes a difference. It could be, could be the color of the the scud too, because I was using a bank or a brown one before and getting bites, and eh, I haven't been doing quite as well fishing this uh, gray or peppy. But we'll see if the split shot shots make a difference, you know. But might just have been a matter of that that weighted fly just wasn't getting down and staying on the bottom like it should have. Tell you what, that's not working either. So, instead of boring you with no action. I'm going to trade change flies again. I'm going to put, if I've got one, put a mink back on. And I do. It's a well worn mink that I've been using the past couple days. Throw it out in the same place the gray one was, and we'll see if it makes a difference. Yep. They hit it. They like the bank better than they do the gray. I'll just see if I can catch one. There's a little one. I 
went to move the fly and he was there. Didn't, did not see the bite. I'm right in front of the pump station. I'm going to try it one more time, then I'm going to head in. I think I'm getting a little bit too deep of water, too. That's why I'm fishing a little closer to the bank. I don't think the, the scud is as effective if it's, it's hanging there uh, below the float, not touching the bottom. It's not to say the fish won't take it. I think it works a lot better if it's on the bottom, moving along the bottom. And there's a fish. It's not a sucker. It's a rainbow. Well, I always wonder what these videos are gonna turn out to be. A lot of them don't even make the editing floor and that one just came off. That was a nice rainbow. Um, but this was kind of an experiment. After yesterday, I wanted to explore a little bit more and maybe put it on video. So it's not a fast and furious way to fish unless maybe they're really biting aggressively, but I think you got a chance for a little bit bigger fish uh, fishing this way down in this area. So hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.